Welcome to the very first Alaska Realtor live stream of 2023. My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska, and my mission, as always, is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today, I'm very lucky to be joined by the Bowmans. They moved up here approximately a year ago, and they're going to be kind of sharing their stories and talking about the, the pros and cons, the good, the bad, everything that has gone into living up here in Alaska. So really looking forward to kind of getting into their story and talking a little bit. Um, a little housekeeping before we get started. We're going to have lots of opportunities for you guys to ask questions in here. And, you know, as we've said before, really good live stream is 100% up to you. We can certainly get up here and just talk, but we want to make sure that it's answering your questions directly. So don't be shy, jump into the comments section and ask any questions that you might have because you have not just me, but you also have the, the Bowmans here who recently moved up here who are going to give you a, a very straight answer as well. So without further ado, um, Bowmans, welcome. And it's uh, good we finally got you guys on here. <laughs> Happy Likewise. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, let's let's go and just jump into this then. So let's talk first kind of on, you know, about your your story and how you guys came to living in Alaska. You want me to take this one? Yeah. Um, so we've moved a lot. Uh, we actually really enjoy it. So we lived in North Carolina for a period of time. We moved to Minnesota for work and lived there for a period of time. And COVID happened and we started looking around the country as jobs went remote and couldn't really align on a place. And we came up here in August, uh, man, when was that? 2021. So right after COVID major shutdowns and started driving around and we ended up in Palmer on a hike. And we were like, man, why do we live here? <laughs> and we went home and started looking at houses and said, we're gonna do it. And then we said, we're gonna do it next year. And then we're gonna do it in the spring. And then in January, we listed our house <laughs> and then we moved. So here we are. You know, I got to say that's I get a lot of people who reach out to me and it's it's actually pretty rare to have people who go from idea to like doing it like in such a short time period. So, you know, I got to say hats off to you guys. That's uh, yeah, I, I don't meet a whole lot of people that have such great follow through. So great on you. <laughs> <laughs> Follow so, through or craziness, one or the other. <laughs> one of the two. So what were some of the initial concerns you guys had when you were looking at moving up here? Because I mean, there's a, I mean, you guys are, are very accomplished in your in your work. You have lots of responsibilities. I know this wasn't just a off the cuff decision. You just blindly leaped. So what were some <laughs> of the thoughts and concerns you guys had as you were jumping into it? Well, things you hear about moving to Alaska, um, some of our, our co-workers and even some of my leadership at the job that I had, even though my job was considered remote, they didn't think Alaska had the internet. Um, so that was a big reservation for, for like the permission of moving here from work, but also uh, we didn't know what we were going to get as far as internet speed. So try to do as much research as possible uh, before we came, but that was a, a concern coming in. Um, I think we were worried about how much daylight there would be during the winter months. So that was a concern coming into it. Um, and then since we came from Minnesota, we had a taste of winter, but we really didn't know what Alaska winter was all about, how much snow we were going to get. So that was a something we were thinking through is, you know, what, what was that going to be like? Um, what are some other things you can think of? I think you've touched on the big ones. We, um, like I said, we've moved a lot. So we're quite used to having a pretty small knit community around us but in minnesota we we found our family so i think that was we didn't know quite how we would handle being away from all of them and i think that's fair anytime you move away from your your community so trying to make sure that we were prepared for that as well yeah i think the move driving up here uh yeah. i see some questions coming in the chat we did we did drive and okay. uh, we so that, our... that answers one of the questions right off the bat okay you drove <laughs> yeah so i mean that's pretty intimidating uh, we have an F-150 um, and we had a 30 foot enclosed trailer. We put our whole life in the back of that thing. And it was us and our two dogs. Um, and, you know, it was April. Um, so it wasn't maybe the best time to come, but it wasn't that bad. It was like driving through Texas for the majority of it. Um, and then we got um, a little bit further north and then we got into the Yukon and then it, 
we went to bed, we woke up and there was, I think, six plus inches of snow. We were making our tracks, um, just kind of keep our, our days uh, long so we could get here as fast as possible. But we were worried about the drive. We tried to prepare as much as possible, a couple spare tires and things like that. But that was definitely a concern heading into it as well. Ryan, did you guys have any crazy stories as you were driving along the, the Alcan or is it pretty much pretty much as business as usual, just a slightly longer road than what you're used to? I, I think that <laughs> once is good. If you get a chance to drive the Alcan and, and you, maybe you don't have your entire life in a trailer on the back of your F-150 um, and it might be more more fun. Um, but I think we we put in, I think, 11 plus hour days. We drove from Minnesota to Palmer in four and a half days. Um, so we cut a couple of days off just driving her along. Um, the worst of it was we were coming down a hill in the snow and I had no brakes and it was just the weight and momentum of the truck that kept us off the guardrail. Um, you remember it slightly different than me. I would not <laughs> recommend it from <laughs> point of view at all. Um, great like, at, like, next, just coming in, coming in high. Yeah, I would not recommend it. Was it just the, the Alcan or the time of year for you? I think it was the time of year. That was definitely a piece of it. And we, we researched the drive up, downs, backwards, sideways. Like we were ultra prepared for the border because you hear crazy horror stories for that all day. They During the, the pandemic, trailer, the borders right? were tough. Yeah. Um, so we were ultra prepared for that. But as soon as we hit the road, it was extraordinarily windy. And anyone with a trailer knows wind is not great. Um, we hit snow. The road wasn't nearly as bad of a condition as what people kind of stress it to be. So there were parts that were really good. Um, we had planned seven, 10 hour days, inclusive of like an all day at the border just to be safe. And then like Christopher said, once we got on the road, we just hammered down and I, I'm glad we got here in four days, but it, it just was four days of stress. Yeah. Um, so just make sure you're planful. You'll find the wind or some other random thing to, to deal with, but I probably would pay someone <laughs> to move us up here <laughs> next time around. Yeah, well, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. All right, so we we've got some questions rolling in here already. So let's let's knock some of these out of the park real quick here, and we'll get on with um, some of our scheduled programming. So number one, coming in from Adam Greco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the beard is fierce. So there you go. People are loving the beard. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> the mountaineer. <laughs> it, it's very distinctive. All right, so let's see here. Coming in from Mr. Brandon, how was it at the border? So, I mean, you guys, uh, there have been lots of stories. We've talked about it um, on the podcast, on this live stream. Some people just skate on through and it it ain't no thing. Um, other people, it's definitely a thing. So, you know, how yeah. did how did it shake out for you guys? Um, so, like I said, we had ultra planned. We had a book with literally everything. Every tote was numbered. What was in the tote? We had spices and food and wood and like all the things they tell you on the website. Um, and of course, we had dogs. We had all their paperwork. All like we were ultra prepared. And we got there at shift change. So we got there at nine o'clock Canada time. And we did have a guy that went through the COVID things, and they weren't quite sure what their COVID rules were. At yeah, the time. that was what was most interesting is they actually didn't know no. what their country's protocol was <laughs> at that given time because they were changing so frequently. So we had that was that took the twenty minutes of them trying to figure out what the stipulations were, um, and they were very confused. But otherwise, they didn't check a thing. No, nothing. Didn't they open a door. Didn't look at the vehicle. Didn't check the dogs. Let us go. They were ready to About go. About twenty home. minutes, we were through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, you just really got to overwhelm them with your preparedness, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they watch for the person that's, like, fumbling and really nervous and, like, obviously doesn't have their stuff together. And I, I think that's who they're looking for. They're not really looking for, you know, the um, fiercely bearded couple that's got all their ducks <laughs> in a row. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny you mentioned that because it triggered something for me. They did not believe that we didn't have guns. So we didn't bring any guns with us. We sold them all before we moved or if you don't have them, but they asked us, I don't even know, 10 different ways. Do you have a gun with you? You don't have anything like not a, a rifle or a handgun or like, no, they're like, what about parts to a gun? Still don't have any parts to a gun. So like that was something as well that they were really digging hard for, but that wasn't a concern for us. So yeah, good, uh, good to know. 
man, that's, I guess they just hear you're from the U.S. and you just <laughs> assume you're, I don't know, I see all these memes. Remember that one with like the American, American, the bald eagle that's like running by with like the, <laughs> <laughs> the machine no. guns? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of what they expect. Okay, so moving on here. Uh, we've got one coming in from from Joshua. I'm just going to jump onto this one real quickly. Uh, for finding work, have a plan. Did you work, uh, apply before getting there? Is it easier once you are there? So for you guys, um, I think it was a little different because I remember you guys saying it was more remote is what you were able to do. Um, do you yeah. have any other insights or anything like that you could offer? I'll start with my story and then I'll let Chris jump in because he's got a little bit different one. Um, so my job in Minnesota was a corporate based job. I applied to become remote. So I became remote eligible. Um, so I still have the same job that I had in Minnesota now here and I work Central Standard Time. So I, I started at 5 a.m. and I'm done by two o'clock every day, Alaska time, um, which has been super fantastic. Yeah. So when we set sail from Minnesota to Alaska, we both already had secured remote jobs at the same uh, major uh, retailer. Um, so we worked from uh, a corporate retailer in Minnesota. Um, but not too long ago, I actually was laid off from that company and then I did have to find work. Um, so it was definitely a stressful period. Um, but if you're remote, um, I mean, there's a lot of options. Someone asked about the Internet up here. Um, we have MTA, if anyone's researching in our area, we have fiber optic, direct line. We actually have better internet now than we did when we lived in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Um, it's faster. It's never gone down. Um, it's great. It works perfect for us. All of the high speeds. Um, we have some home automation stuff and all of that works fine. You can check your ring cameras and uh, open your garage doors, all that stuff like normal. So the internet's great, at least for us. Um, but uh, I did secure some jobs, uh, a job, a, another Minnesota uh, a corporation picked me up. Um, so um, just had to go through a little period of finding a job. So I didn't find anything in Alaska, but I did find another remote job uh, doing logistics out of Minnesota. And you guys are, um, there's always something new, big, life-changing event with you guys every time I'm checking in. So yeah. I feel like feel like I need to check in on you guys more often. Well, Jamie, <laughs> I don't want to give you the bad news. I want to give you all the exciting, fun news. Yeah, you know what? News is news at this point. So. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All right. So let's go ahead and move on here. So when you guys did make that decision to go, um, how did your friends, family respond when you know y'all said you're going to be moving to Alaska? Did that? Do you think that completely took them out? You know, it took them um, by surprise, or was it like, you know, this is Chris and Meg, of course, they're going to be doing this. Uh, I, everyone was extraordinarily supportive. Um, everyone we've told, and our friends' parents even have been more than supportive and involved. Uh, we actually picked maybe a bad time to go. Our, our bestest, best friends, our family announced they were pregnant yeah. almost right after we said that we were moving. Um, so it's everyone's supportive of technology now. It's very easy to stay in touch, still have face-to-face -face interactions. Um, so yeah, supportive. And it, it's it's definitely different, maybe a little bit more difficult, but. Yeah, yeah. we thought there would be more excitement for people to, to like want to come visit, but <laughs> we've had to drag some people into that conversation. Um, some folks have already visited and they're really sweet for doing so. We loved having them, um, but we moved to Alaska. The only person we knew here was you, Jamin. You were our <laughs> only contact in this entire state and since we moved here we've doubled the number of people we talk to in the state it's you and the local pizza shop up the road so um we we do want our friends and family to come visit us we just got to find out the right time for when it works there you go i mean yeah i mean you guys do too many more uh, trips on the train i imagine that's not going to be very very difficult to make happen <laughs> Well, to be clear, we're, I don't know that we're shopping for any friends. <laughs> to be clear, the people here Not shopping for visitors. Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> the people here are extraordinarily nice. I'm yeah. so used to Minnesota where, like, you're head down in the grocery store. You don't make eye contact unless you're going to, like, fist fight somebody. And here it's, I mean, our neighbors are marvelous. It's, we have a community Facebook page. And I think the first post or second post that we saw on there was like, I'm making cookies or something and I don't have sugar. Does anyone have anything I could 
borrow steel. And I'm like, we're, we're back in the 1950s. It's but, like small town, super cool. Yeah. And I really, I super appreciate it. Like, I know if I need help, there are plenty of people, even if they're strangers, that will step in and help you. They like the community here is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, especially in the area that you guys live in, um, there is such a culture in that area because it was kind of originally established as more of an agricultural hub. And you can still like walk around and see like all the, you know, see all of the um, the pioneer homes all over the place. And there's, um, if you're a big history nerd, there's a lot of interesting stuff in that particular area, but I know most people aren't. We'll have a specific podcast and a live stream for that one later. Nerd so nerd. Let, me, let me jump into a couple more questions here. Uh, this one coming in from uh, Jesse, I'm sorry, Jesse, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this, um, Lepinen. Um, how often have you had to use the generator? So first off, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I've, you know, really examined y'all's property. I don't think y'all have a generator, do you? We do. Oh, Jay. wait, yes. we need to have right. you oh, the internet. That's right. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> yeah, we actually got a... Um, in our, our community Facebook page, um, they uh, actually reached out to us the other day. Some of the neighbors, they're like, hey, we've had a lot of power outages recently. Um, but you, like our Christmas lights were running. Everything was bright. Um, internet, fridge is running, freezer full of fish, all still good. Heat's going, TV's on. Everybody else is in <laughs> dark. the dark. Um, so we do have a generator. It's run a handful of times. Um, I think the longest power outage we had in our area is four hours. Um, due to a high wind storm that was coming through and some transformers blew. So it's been clutch having that. And uh, we're trying to talk our neighbors into getting something so that they uh, they can feel like they're keeping up with Joneses. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> I think too, it's to your point, the power outages are have not been long here at all. Um, but of course, there was that crazy wind storm a couple of years ago where people were without power for a significant period of time, just, just due to the severity of that storm. So I think most people feel comfortable not having one, uh, but because we did have a lot of angst from our employment at the time of not being available, we wanted to make sure we had internet 100% of the time. Um, and we're obviously not ones to go small. So we're like, if we need internet, we might as well just make sure the whole home continues to run. So we yep. did the whole home generator. Yeah, I mean, I was actually looking at getting the generator myself because I you know, moved out to the Matsu Valley not too long ago. You know, obviously still work in Anchorage, but um, I moved out to the Matsu Valley and I was like, OK, so I know we get lots of winds out here and I have to decide between am I going to get a wood stove or am I going to get a generator? Um, just for me personally, it I my Internet goes out. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm just going to get a wood stove and. No, that's uh, that's going to be my ticket to staying warm if something does happen, and it doesn't happen often. But every so now and every so often, like you, you're really glad that you had that. Agreed, mm -hmm. Jesse. There's golf courses up here. You should come visit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's jump. Get to a couple more, a couple more questions here. Okay, so coming in from a Quarter Sister, did you guys um, have to change any level of lifestyle, diet, et cetera, due to prices? Um, so, no, I, no to start. I would um, say yes. Well, I can't wait to hear what you say. Really? I, I, I sold my race car. Oh, well, that doesn't get up here. That was not for the listening. That's a lifestyle yeah. sacrifice. <laughs> that was up here. You're gonna get another one, so it's not like Whoa. it's so bad up here. I love all these witnesses Jeez, that heard that. Um, <laughs> so prices are like marginally. Uh, let me also preface this: Minnesota is very expensive as well, so you kind of have to take what I say with a little bit of grain of salt because I was used to expensive prices in Minnesota and the Twin Cities uh, specifically. Um, so I didn't. I haven't found them to be too crazy. And even when we were just in Minnesota for New Year's, I picked up eggs for a friend and they were more expensive in Minnesota than they are here. Granted, you can't find them here, but if you can, they're cheaper than in the lower 48. So it's, it's varies on what you're looking at and what you buy. But for the most part, for me, it was very much the same. Yeah. We cut down on a lot. We had, a, we had three vehicles. We went down to one. We only brought one vehicle with us. 
Um, so those are some other uh, expenditures that we just don't have. Gas is more expensive. That's yeah, just to be understood, well. but yeah. it really hasn't slowed us down. You, you fill up and you go like you're just so excited to go out and explore an adventure. You're not really thinking about it. It's kind of more that smiles per gallon versus miles per gallon situation. So <laughs> yeah, some slight changes, but like I think someone mentioned diet. We still find really great food. We go out to eat, we go explore, we try new things. Um, so if anything, we've expanded probably mm -hmm. our diet versus, um, you know, kind of reel back or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we do have a pretty active, um, pretty active farmer's market community around here. So for those of you who really want that, um, really want that, um, you know, directly from the farm to your table like that, so that's pretty hard to beat. Yeah, we're in the Butte part of Palmer and right up the road is a, is a farm where you get to pick your own vegetables, it's which is amazing. kind of neat. It's a neat little novelty. You just go and walk the rows and pick out your own vegetables and stuff. It's mm -hmm. kind of neat. I love it. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to get to two more here. Okay. Two more. And then we're, we're going to keep moving. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Coming in from Mr. Craig Allen. Is there anything you wish you would have brought with you from the lower 48 rather than buy up in Alaska? The race car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so Nick is actually on the chat and he actually owns our race car now. He takes really great care of it. Um, so thanks, Nick, for what you're doing oh. out there. <laughs> um, but to answer the question, I, I we brought more furniture than I thought we, we needed. We ended up bringing furniture and then selling it and buying furniture locally because we liked what's here. There's a lot of craftsmen um, and a lot of like art based products and in, in community here. And we've actually keep buying more local made in Alaska stuff. Um, I wish we would have probably brought a second car. Um, we didn't, you know, it's not so much an Alaska problem as much as it is like this, the economics of where we are um, as a nation, how expensive things have gotten. But uh, for the most part, I think we brought what we needed. Yeah, brought it from the lower, the only I've heard Friends. a lot of like, yeah, horror stories around not being able to get stuff shipped here and you can definitely get stuff shipped here. Sometimes it is more expensive, especially if someone personally is shipping like UPS, FedEx, that kind of stuff. It just takes longer, but there's been some special order items. Like we just try to get a faucet. <laughs> it did not work out, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would not really. I feel like we can acquire everything. There's been some like novelty things that are regional items, but it's not like make or break. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's really nice about moving up here, and for some parts of the country, this is going to be more prevalent than others, but there's really not a flex culture up here. And um, people, those of you in the audience who really aren't sure what that is, um, go to Miami or go to any of these other uh, big cities sometime, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the, um, you know, the person revving their Ferrari in the car right next to you. And, um, you know, that's cool and all that, but it's very expensive and you really don't, it's an unnecessary expense up here because nobody really cares. <laughs> 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 you got a Ferrari and you're, you're revving it, like no one's going to care. That is just for your soul edification. <laughs> and it has a cracked windshield anyway, because that's, yeah. that everyone does. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like, yeah. Mm, okay. Okay, let's see here. I got plenty of questions. I'm gonna save a couple of these till a little bit later. Um, let's go and jump into this one though. Coming in from Quarter Sister again. How was your first dark winter? Did you have a hard time with it? I love that dark it's, is yeah because yeah, she knows yeah. I know. Um, so again, Minnesota. We were used to driving into work in the dark, and we left in the dark. Uh, I actually feel like I have more sunlight now, and it has more to do with the fact that of working central standard time. So I get off work and I still have sunlight. Um, but we are in the view of part of Palmer. We have sunlight at the worst. It was nine 30 and then it was dark by like three 30, four o'clock. So you still had a significant amount of sunlight and it was daylight. It wasn't like a dark light. Um, the only thing is, especially where we are, we don't actually get to see the sun unless we drive to Palmer or Wasilla. Um, so if you're really, really interested in seeing the actual ball in the sky <laughs> maybe not the view but yeah. zero problems we with... live just right in front of pioneer peak so the sun is behind the mountain range throughout the day so there's plenty of sun like there's nothing that's gonna 
prohibit you from living your life. Um, that we don't have any um, sun lamps or happy lights or anything like that. Um, completely fine. Um, there's enough light to, to function and feel good. Just that sun ball, you don't physically see it for three or so months out here in the Butte because it's behind the giant mountain range. <laughs> yeah, which I got to say that um, where you guys are at and where the, the Pioneer Peak is, like there is no more dramatic make you feel small mountain setup yeah. I think I've seen anywhere where it's just like the thing is just towering over you. <laughs> Wonderful. We love it. And that's what happens when you have a good partner in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice plug. Good job. I love it. All right. So after one year, how is Alaska different from what you guys expected? You know, or, you know, is it exactly what you thought it was? If you think the majesty of Alaska wears off, it really doesn't. Like if you come here for adventure and outdoors and activities, like that stuff is just, it just keeps coming. Um, so a year in, I'm as excited as I was before I came. There's just so much to explore. I mean, the territory is vast. There's so much stuff to see. And then there's the seasonality changes in some of the geographies because it is such a big area. And Northern Alaska is way different at any given day than it is in the South. So like you feel like, I don't know, you're, you're traversing the United States just within one state. Um, so I, it's super, exciting for me. I love everything about this. It's worked out really well. Um, yeah. I don't know how you feel. No, it's same. It's, uh, it's definitely better than I expected. It just, you kind of mentioned, we have a spectacular view. That was like a hard requirement for us. And every day I think I stare out the back window and say, I just can't, like, it's just so beautiful here. And no matter where you hike or where you go, like even going to the grocery store, you're like, holy cow, it's just amazing. And um, it's just, it's a beautiful place to live and to explore and there's just so much to do. So it's, uh, people are nicer than I expected. That was probably the, the one big thing for me, which is a good thing. So it's, uh, I love it. Can't recommend it enough. I tell everyone that they at the very least need to come visit, but yeah, no regrets. Yeah. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> so what are some of the pros and some of the cons so far? I mean, I, gone over my list multiple times before, but I mean, that's, that's just a realtor talking about the pros and cons. So for you guys with approximately your first year here, you know, what would you say some of your pros and cons would be? Let's start with cons. Cause I went in on a higher note. <laughs> okay. 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 So I think <laughs> some of the cons, um, there's a lot of accidents that tend to happen mm. on Glen. Um, so it gets backed up um and there's you know unfortunate things that happen and you see it on the news and stuff like that but more accidents that you would think would happen on a state that has basically one highway um people don't know how to figure that one out um mm -hmm. the roads are interesting to me here uh i know i keep mentioning minnesota but like obviously there's lots of snow in minnesota so i'm used to that level of road care here has been shocking to me what the definition of the roads are good uh they're not great to me, but I think that's just a different expectation and lifestyle. So that, that took a little bit of time for me to get used to. Yeah. I mean, one interesting thing about the roads too, um, if you look at it in Wasilla, you'll notice like most of the roads like have this triangle, like configuration set up for them. And over in Palmer, everything's very rectangular as you go along. And I mean, there's kind of a long history with the development there. Um, actually, a lot of the pioneers that came up originally in the 1930s were actually from Minnesota as well. So that's funny. We've kind of come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Blame them. Yeah. That's, that's the, exactly. wind, the wind's been something that's been surprising for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got it mapped out now, depending on which way the wind is going to blow, depends on like if our mm -hmm. house is like going to be impacted by the wind. We have, we don't have any damage on our property or anything like that. It's just, you know, it gets on, you know, into your nerves a little bit. You're a little more anxious uh, when you have up to 83 mile an hour wind gusts coming at you. Um, but because we are tucked up close to the, uh, to the mountain, uh, only when the uh, winds are coming westward or yeah, westward, do we really get um, the winds? And for the majority of the winter months, it's been coming uh, east. Um, so we've been good. Yeah, we've everyone else has kind of been ducking for cover and we've been been good. 
Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, we had like that that big, um, we had that big like a uh, snow dump. I think it was actually about a month ago, and then right after that, we had like that that big windstorm kind of go through here in yeah. the in the Matsu Valley. So that's that's when you guys got that you know eighty plus mile per hour gust going through. We yeah. didn't get a single blip. It was not windy over here. We got the the snow. We got all of that. Uh, did not get any wind. So where the snow kind of blew away, we still have it. And because we have no sun, the actual ball in the sky, uh, it doesn't like melt anything either. So we're, we have ice and snow still over here. Yep. That, uh, that sounds about right. So let's, let's jump over to a couple questions here. Pros. Working Central Time in Alaska is awesome because you okay. you basically get your work day out of the way and then you still have Alaska daylight and time to go explore. There's yeah. so much to do. There's a great um, like social activity. Uh, we ran into Jamin at a Halloween event. We didn't even know he was gone. It's so cool. You're out there seeing people, meeting people. There's always some social thing to do. So uh, we really like that aspect uh, of the community going out and exploring. So lots and lots of pros uh, compared to the you know a couple of cons. Yeah, I mean, I would also say like your chances of running into like really anybody, your odds are actually fairly high here. Like I, yeah. I just came from um, a trip down to Juneau just a little bit ago, uh, meeting with one of my colleagues down there. We should have a market update video um, uploading in just a little bit, by the way. So I'll be looking for that for Juneau. But on that flight, I was like looking around. I was like, you know what? I think I know who that is. I think that's Senator so-and-so. And it's, I mean, where, how else are they going to get there? There's only one airline. <laughs> so yeah. your odds of running into someone are, are really good. Uh, Meg, are there any other pros you'd like to like to throw in there? No, I think we, we've touched on most of them. We went for a quick drive the other day. We saw 11 bald eagles and a moose just out running an errand. Um, so we consider that a pro. Some people might think that's a con, um, but uh, the, you know, there is, we, there's a couple of moose just up the road bedded down. We ran up to uh, run an errand today after work, and they're just there. So if you enjoy the um, interaction with wildlife and, and seeing things from a safe distance, then it's pretty it's pretty cool. I do have yeah. I don't know if it's a pro or con, but the amount of earthquakes has been shocking. Like we knew that there were earthquakes. The frequency of earthquakes has taken us by surprise. You can have a lot of fun with that, or it can be scary depending on messes with my equilibrium a little bit, but that's been, that's been a good time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So when, can you guys remember like your first big earthquake? We or felt a little one at the house and I think we felt one before that, but it was very tiny. We weren't really sure, but the first one was at the house and it lasted like a couple of seconds. It, it was very small. You could just hear it coming. So yeah. like you could just kind of hear whatever that was and it kind of came across the house. You could, you know, the glasses touched in the cabinets and then it was on its way. But you, I mean, it it's like a little wave in the in the ground. My, my first big one, I was actually getting my hair done. I was at a salon and that really kind of freaked me out because I wasn't really familiar with the, the location either. And the mirrors were rattling. That was a five. I think it was a five zero. That one. That one shook me a little bit just because the unique location. It was a pretty big one, um, and it lasted a lot longer than the little ones that we had had before that one. So that was my first big one. Yeah, I mean, you're. Yeah, that, that's really the thing about the earthquakes up here, that um, you kind of just get used to it. You know, especially once you're kind of used to the uh, area as well. Like I think. Um, just uh, like less than a week ago, a couple of days ago, we had like a 4.2 earthquake or something like that. And I mean, you guys didn't even mention that. So that's kind of how <laughs> after a while it, it just becomes part of, of just living up here. Yeah, there's no damage. We haven't seen or had, mm -hmm. you know, any issues. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a thing that happens occasionally um, and you're along for the ride. Yeah. So let's let's ask um, answer this question here from uh, from Quarter Sisters. So did you have any wildlife encounters yet, and um, what you would that you would want to highlight? Um, so right around the end of summer, beginning of fall, especially when they start digging up the farmland, you see a significant increase in moose, um, and we have quite a few of them in the backyard. I think that's probably been the one that we highlight. 
it's not quite so frequent that it's overwhelming but like i mean we count wildlife when we go to lowe's so it's it's enough that if you pay attention you'll find it pretty easily we were walking the coastal trail tony Knowles, um down in anchorage and we came across a baby maybe a yearling moose and it just stopped in the path in front of us get out the camera and try to look around for the mom and, yeah. then, and then get on your way. Um, so that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting as well. Yep. That's, uh, awesome. that's, that's really the way to do it. All right. I'm trying to go through questions and comments here at the same time. So give me just a second. Okay. So let's, let's answer this one coming in from Ash. So were you surprised about the big difference in the price for most homes um, per square foot compared to the lower 48. Well, I, I think we did a little bit of that to ourselves, Ash. We bought during the peak um, when things were kind of at their most expensive. So we knew that going into it. Um, and like people that are buying homes right now that are just having to pay more in um, the higher interest rates. Like if you want something, you just have to go into it knowing that that's what you're you're investing into. And it's, you know, it's, it's worth it. So it, it was more, but it wasn't a surprise no we we came into this eyes wide open knowing that we were going to pay to play and and we're we're happy we did and we really wanted the view and we knew that also came at the premium price so yeah i don't know if if you're looking for modest alaska experience we we might not be the best on that question fair enough now i get another one here from s shepherd how's the fishing um, did you fill your freezer Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went halibut fishing on a charter. Um, so we're waiting until um, we officially get our one year residency uh, fishing license because they're substantially cheaper. So the only fishing we've done so far is charter fishing, but uh, we caught enough halibut to fill the freezer. So I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, down in Homer, where you get really great halibut fishing. It Catch a McBay. Super, yeah, fantastic. Definitely recommend that, local or not. That was great. That's the place to do it. Plus, I mean, you guys should be getting your um, your um, card to be able to go dip netting here. Um, I I can't remember if it's this year or if it's going to be next year. I think I think you have to wait two years. I could be wrong yeah, on that. Though. I think it is. But okay. we're either way, we're going to learn from you because I know that's something that you and your family do, and you catch all the you. I think you a lot out in a day. Yeah, I was able to go out there and catch like 25 within like a couple of hours. So it's like there's right. most of my protein for an entire year. So for those of you who are, um, I like to use the word thrifty, but it sounds better than uh, just saying cheap. But yeah, for either however you want to term it. Yeah, that's awesome. Let me tell you. All right. So let's jump in here real quick then. So what are some of your favorite summer activities so far? Oh boy, all of them. <laughs> there you go. We've done some really simple things where yeah. we'll, we're, we're kind of in the craft beer. So we'll go get some, um, there's three um, breweries right here in the Palmer area. We can get uh, you know a couple of beers to go. Um, there's this little uh, Butte Burger place. And it's, it's basically like a roadside stand, but they make really good greasy burgers. It's just exactly what you're looking for. And then we'll drive down to the river, um, cross the river in the truck, and then set up shop with the dogs and um, have a, like a little picnic. It's like those, even those simple things just are, are super um, like, I don't know, energizing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we like to travel. We like to try the new beers. Yeah, it's. To your point, well, you can do something as simple as just take a, a hike down the road or go on a picnic and it's spectacular. Or you can do something crazy like drive down to Homer and spend a weekend or a week on the on the spit and go fishing and go whitewater rafting. I mean, sure. even just driving to Girdwood, Gird, I'm not going to be able to say it, Girdwood mm -hmm. Brewery, um, and driving along the scenic highway, like just small or big, you will, you will get into something that is pretty fantastic. So... Yeah, all of them is the answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> all the above. And I have a um, comment here from a Trish Bowman saying white water rafting. And side, side by side. side. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, yeah. mom might have taken some of these when she was up here. So, <laughs> well, 
There we go. The last <laughs> campaign, so yeah, Trish, Trish knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, let's get on to this other one. What are some of your favorite winter activities now? Well, after December, it's shoveling snow. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> We had to shovel the day. We woke up with uh, two or three inches. So we, after work, we went out there and, and shoveled. But uh, um, I, I think it's been more of the wildlife watching. There's more um, animals out when the snow's really deep off the road. They're more prevalent on the road. Um, so you just see a lot more um, things about. Um, we've we've done some outdoor camping, like in parking lots, um, <laughs> even though that it's winter. Um, for some events and things like that. Um, yeah, we've kind of failed on the winter activities a little bit with the, the job fluctuation and we traveled back to Minnesota for the holidays and stuff. So um, haven't done too much. We get to see the lights on the back porch. Oh, so that's yeah, yeah. Put that in the pro category. Wake up. They're right yeah. outside the window. That's been our favorite winter activities. Just For sure. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Outstanding. Well, we're going to slow down just a bit here and take a take a couple more questions. So coming in from, let's see, doo -doo -doo, we're going to go with Mr. Jack. So what areas are still not taxed on the land yet accessible looking to build a cabin? Okay, um, I think you are going to experience some level of tax. They're going to get you in some sneaky way on uh, just about anywhere. Um, I, I mean, really, it's, it's just going to go as far out as you can. I'm going to have a um, realtor on from uh, Willow next week, kind of talking about some of the more remote locations. So that's going to be a really good one to, to kind of sit in on and, you know, kind of hear what his perspectives are. But just as rule of thumb, though, if there is a road going to it that's maintained by any kind of city, local governments, anything like that, it was where it was created by such, then chances are there's going to be some level of property taxes to it. Um, made it yourself, though, well, let's say there's a pretty good chance. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else you want to add to that? No. Okay. I would just work with Damon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I guess that's the answer. Reach out and we'll, uh, we'll get it figured out. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. Okay, here's another one coming in from Quarter Sister. Did you rent a place and first and decided where you wanted to live or start the process of buying before and just jumped into a house buying immediately? Yeah, did not rent. Go big or go home, like motto. <laughs> so uh, it was super great because Jamin is willing to do uh, virtual showings, which is actually super beneficial to really understand the outside landscape too, because that was really critical to us. Um, we did have you a little bit all over the map. We we definitely thought we, <laughs> we wanted did. to be closer to Wasilla, and then I think it went up to like Fishhook. Then we started asking about the Butte, and Butte doesn't have the greatest reputation, um, but they are building a lot of really nice homes out here. And uh, this one popped up. I think you saw it and didn't even talk to me about it. You were like, "This like go look at this one," and we were all in on this one once we saw it. So. Yeah. And I mean, those virtual showings, they're always, they're, they're not as good as if you guys were there personally, because mm -hmm. I mean, personally, like my old factory senses aren't particularly good. So, I mean, especially when we like close on the property, you guys haven't had a chance to like physically come up here and look at it. Like I am just sweating bullets, like for like, <laughs> when I know the people are going to be getting into town, because it's like, are they going to get there after closing and decide that they hate it? Uh, what's going to happen? Is there some aroma I wasn't aware of? Like yours? Yeah. yeah. We did make it a point. I think that's a good call, Jim. And we, so we put an offer in site, quote unquote, quite, you know, unseen. We saw it through the video. Um, but we did come up for the inspection because we also wanted to make sure we saw it before we closed on anything. Obviously, we would still lose a little bit of money in that situation, but at least we would know exactly what we're walking into. So if you are going to buy virtually, to Jamie's point, please try to get up here and see it before you, you sign the dotted line. Yeah, because I mean, we've done that a couple of times, but yeah, it's it's definitely not optimal. 
<laughs> if we can shop, avoid your, it. shop your realtor and someone that is this visible that you can understand their for, like their perspectives like jamin has a ton of content and that's how i got to know him before i actually knew him i sent him an email out of the blue and he responded and it just worked from there yep absolutely i mean it was a it was a pretty good intro email i gotta say by the way like it uh let me see we are a craft beer loving couple that are yeah it was like very like unique i was going through it i was like well that's it really paints a picture there so i feel like i know these people pretty fast i'm either gonna help them or call the police you <laughs> one of the two we're gonna help them either way <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's let's get in one more question here before moving on. So coming in from Brandon, do you have eggs in Palmer? Um, have you had a hard time finding anything else there? Uh, eggs have been a struggle, huge struggle. Uh, I did get two dozen. I don't know what day that was, Wednesday, Tuesday, something like that. Uh, we did finally. So it, you just have to time it right with their deliveries, but they are a little difficult to get right now. Um, peanut butter was a struggle during the summer. I don't know if that was a lower 48 thing or not. Um, some feminine products was hard to get in the summer. Um, I think that's about it. Everything still feels pretty accessible. Yeah. Um, we order still a lot from Amazon. It takes an extra couple days, but it's still reasonable. And as long as you're kind of, you know, future looking, everything just shows up on the doorstep. It's really mm -hmm. convenient. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're ordering stuff for Christmas, though, like if you don't order it, like at the beginning of November, like it's, if you order in, in like December, it's, yeah, I mean, you're pretty much just ordering, just know it's in God's hands at that point. It's just going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> well, yeah, we, uh, we were fortunate. Again, our, our best friends became our PO box in Minnesota. We, we send a lot of Christmas stuff directly to them <laughs> for that very reason. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and get on here to let's go ahead and ask this one here. What do you wish you'd done differently in the process of moving up here? Um, I think at the end of the day, it worked out as it was supposed to. Um, so I don't know if there's anything drastic. I, we unloaded a ton of stuff between Minnesota and here, just because we knew we were going to get it all into a 20 foot trailer. But man, we should have dumped way more. Like we should have just had a couple suitcases and called it. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel about it. We didn't hire a moving service. Every time we move, because it seems like we move every five to seven years. Um, I saw someone ask, um, like, I don't know, maybe I would consider that, but I still want to know where everything is, especially as you're, you're lugging it up through Canada. You know, there's the potential that they'd want to know exactly what's in what tote. They do have some pretty strong stipulations around different organic materials, and you'll want to know where that is. So as long as the movie company is able to pack it in that way and tell you where things are, it may not be a, that big a deal. Um, but uh, uh, while moving, I don't know that we would have done anything anything different. Maybe the time of year, we would have maybe pushed it a little bit um, later into the year. That way we didn't run into all that snow uh, in the Yukon. But uh but otherwise, no, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I did sell the trailer when I got here. I think someone <laughs> did ask that. I, I intended to keep it, but for what I was able to sell it for, <laughs> I let her go. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm glad you answered that. I will take that out of the queue then. <laughs> We've got that answered. Outstanding. So let's let's see here. Um, what this is coming in from uh, Little J. So what's the worst thing about winter in Alaska? I know this is um, kind of the elephant in the room that um, everyone always wants to talk about when we talk about Alaska. So for you guys, what's what's been kind of the biggest struggle so far, or has it been a struggle? I don't know. Minnesota. It's it's not exactly Bahamas either. So. No, I, like the temperature has been fine. In fact, we we try to watch, you know, where the temperature is between some of the places we've lived historically and now, and it's not much different. It's colder in Minnesota, it's warmer here, and then it flip flops um, within a couple degrees. So it's pretty consistent. Um, we live in a temperate area because we are where we are here in the Butte, and you have the uh, mountain range on one side and the other mountain range, and there's a glacier. The wind comes off the ocean. It comes across the glacier. It's it's uh, 
um, it's got a name, uh, Chinook winds. They're actually a little bit warmer winds. So um, we feel pretty comfortable from a temp temperature standpoint, a little bit more snow um, than we've experienced in the past. Um, I think the worst for me, it's not, you know, it's not the darkness because um, it's not really dark. It's, it's really the amount of accidents um, and things that happen out on the, on the highway. Because when you only have one way from Anchorage back and it's shut down because somebody was driving with bald tires um, or they were overzealous with their driving and, and they roll it for everyone, that's, that's a tough night. Yeah, I would say for me, and it's, I don't like to drive, period. It can be beautiful, sunny, and dry, and I don't like to drive. I really don't like driving in winter in Alaska. It scares the crap out of me with the road situation. Yeah, I mean, you get some people that really seem to know what they're doing on the roads, and they kind of take their time, and then you have other people that are, I mean, I'd say sometimes actually having studded tires and you know, having all the, the fancy braking systems, it can actually create more of a liability because you get into this, this habit of thinking everyone else around you has those same things. So you might be able to stop on a dime and be just fine. Everyone around you might not be able to do the same thing. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, people that are overly confident, which makes, to your point, right? Like you can be not confident enough that causes issues. You're slowing down traffic, you're a hazard. And then you also have people here that are just going 75 in a blizzard, and that's not safe either. So you get both spectrums here. No studded tires for us. We have three peak good <laughs> winter tires, but nothing studded, and we haven't had any trouble. Yep. Outstanding. So I've got another question here from S. Shepard. How are the electric bills compared to, comparable to the lower 48? So I paid the electric bill in minnesota and here and they are the same so we're in a 1900 square foot house i think something like that and it fluctuated of course between summer and winter but um yeah i would it's like right now i think it's 150 a month roughly so it's it's not terrible for us yep outstanding and i'm gonna let you guys answer this question here so any issues with property crime for you or your neighbors not a blip. You start looking at crime maps and you can go crazy looking at Alaska crime maps because of percentages and population density in certain areas. Like it, it, it may look way worse than it ever is in real life. I, I feel like we, we live in a really safe, mm -hmm. secure area. I actually feel unsafe going back to where I used to live compared to you know, we call it the safety and security of the mountain. We just really love where we're at. We feel safe here. I have not been um, really in any situations in the state of Alaska that I have felt truly unsafe. Yeah, the, he's had to travel for work recently. Um, and like Jamin said, we've been here less than a year and I had no qualms being by myself at all versus when he traveled for work in Minnesota was a little bit of a different story. Um, I think the worst crime we've seen anywhere on this side of the, the river has been people getting into mailboxes and that's that's been about the extent of it kids throwing rocks at signs and stuff like that kids will be kids yeah. <laughs> yeah and for the most part that's that's really what it is um i mean i've talked with people who've worked in law enforcement and i mean they've also said you know the thing is you can look at if you just look at the stats solely based off of the proportions alaska is always going to stack really high just because it's such a small population like we're going to be doing a real honest to true statistical analysis alaska would probably be thrown out or there would actually be some kind of adjustment for it just because it is on such a extreme end of the population spectrum mm -hmm. population is only 738,000 people approximately in the entire state you can see how one person acting a fool can really throw the whole thing off. Meanwhile, if I go to the uh, lower 40, well, let's say this, if the entire population of Alaska, like went on vacation at the exact same time, like we just put like, you know, clothes, be back later. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere in Alaska, we go somewhere else. And there are some cities where if we all just showed up, the state of Alaska showed up every last one of us, man, woman, child, baby. The chances are we'd all have, probably have some crime committed against us within like the first couple of days. So, <laughs> yes, welcome to human race. Yeah. That is it. 
All right. So I've got one more coming in here. I am pretty sure this is coming in from the one and only Isaiah. So moving companies, we pay thirteen thousand dollars for one truck and one con um, for one Connex from Hawaii. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Isaiah. <laughs> Some other Perfect. folks that yeah actually moved up about the same time that you get, that you guys did. But yeah, those uh, moving from Hawaii that that can be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Also, but why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're not alone. Like, I actually helped uh, multiple people this year, like, move up from Hawaii. <laughs> no, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Yeah, it's uh, like, I, I mean, I love visiting, but yeah, it's, it's the price of paradise, though. It, it gets you. Yeah, that's fair. All right. I've got a couple more questions here. Um, are you guys doing good, by the way? Absolutely. Yep, hanging out. Okay. Here. Okay. So let's, let's do this. Um, been going for about an hour at this point. Let's uh, go ahead and get through a couple more of our, a um, couple more on our um, um, comments here. First, let's go ahead and just get through a couple more of our general questions. And then we'll just kind of go straight to just Q&A and tire everybody out by answering all the questions. <laughs> well, just go until they're all done. Okay, so what do you wish you'd done differently in your first year so not just in the moving aspect but like just overall the entire process of having moved to alaska and adjusted up here what are some of the things you wish you'd done differently i can think of a couple of things we did buy a new construction home and when you buy a new construction home you may not have things like window shades or a yard or a driveway mm -hmm. <laughs> like they still have to put in the driveway no, we, we finally did get it in. Um, okay. I was about to say, if not, then we're, we're going to circle back to that. We're <laughs> we are a breach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, it was so difficult to get contractors lined up to do work. Um, and I don't know. That was really tough. I don't know how I would have approached it differently, but I would have tried anything to get that done in a more timely manner uh, with less stress, um, with less expense. Um, that's a good one. I like definitely would do that differently, just knowing what we know now about locking some of that stuff in and getting commitments to dates and things. It, it worked a little bit differently than we expected, but that's a good one. I think another one that comes to mind is planning throughout the summer because this is such a tourist destination. Like there is just so much here to do that people enjoy. Um, they kind of beat you to reservation. So you really got to start thinking ahead. So if you're just going to like, oh, I'm going to, go get a hotel and um, check out a spot. Yeah. yeah it doesn't... Where, you know, wherever you want to go, you may or may not actually find reservations. So either pack your tent or plan a little better. Yep. Absolutely. That's, that's a good point. And actually for those of you that are more um, contractor handyman inclined, I mean, feel free to reach out to me. I'm actually seeing if I can get together some kind of a, program with a local contractor to seasonally have him, you know, if I can direct a lot of outside contractors to him, then possibly we can take care of some of these, um, you know, some of these contractor and handyman shortages that we have up here. Because I know a lot of people from lower 48 would love to come up here and, you know, work here during the summer, make some good money and then be able to go home. Um, so if that's something that would be appealing to you, feel free to reach out to me. We'll talk a little bit and see how best we can make that work. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go through some of our questions here. And for those of you in the comments section, thank you very much. Keep those questions coming. We are going to be getting into our uh, final round here of questions. So you know, if you have any final thoughts here, um, any questions, concerns you've had, about moving up to Alaska. This is your opportunity to ask some folks who have recently made the move and can really speak authoritatively to it. So let's let's see here. Let's answer this question from little little J. So is it possible to drive from Prudhoe Bay um, to I can never pronounce this, but it's it's Barrow on the frozen yeah. ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and the winter with the proper permits and precautions. Do you guys know anything about that? I don't really know anything about that. 
that's another one of those like why <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like well why though <laughs> we do want to go up that way but we haven't crossed that that bridge yet as it were i'd, I'd put that uh, challenge back to little jay you let us know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely take lots of lots of pictures while you're out there um, <laughs> See if you can find some polar bears. So here's here's real quick the thing about about taking a trip down out to uh, to Barrow, and I think everyone should do it at least once, just so they see like the um, extends like the, the edge of civilization, and if you would like how far you are out there, it is really interesting just for that reason. Um, there's not going to be, you know, they have an Arctic tour up there. Unfortunately, we got up there. And they just decided not to have it that, that morning <laughs> that we that we were there. So it's like, oh, great, here we are. But here was the catch: they um, the when we showed up, it was in the fall time. What they don't tell you is there's a lot of fog, and so when we were coming in, like we um, you know we landed, everybody started cheering. We're like, man, well that's a seems like an overreaction for a. <laughs> like normal landing like what's going on there but we're like asking people and it's like well what was that all about it's like well they haven't been able to actually get anyone in here for about three or four days at this point because there's just so much fog coming in from the arctic ocean this time of year that they can't land it because of some repairs and stuff they're doing to the runway and they don't have like the, the computer they can use anymore to line them up so We've had a number of times where they get all the way there, they like circle around the airfield and they have to go all the way back to Anchorage. And I was like, great. And yeah, we're here. Yeah. I mean, you see like everyone just like in a frenzy because you have like tourists who have been stuck here for like three or four days on the edge of the world, just in a frenzy, getting onto the plane as quick as they can. <laughs> so if you go, try not to do it in the fall, um, do it, go whole hog, do it in the winter or go in the, the summertime, don't do the fall. <laughs> Make sure you remember that. No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. All right, coming in from Mr. Brandon here. Did you use a local lender? I'm assuming that's for buying a house. We did use a, <clears throat> excuse me, a local lender. Our primary bank didn't actually bank in Alaska, so we did go local. Yeah, nationwide, uh, like insurance, is it nationwide? Yeah. <laughs> 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 We we did take advantage of uh, some contacts that Jamin actually had, and uh, yeah, we're all set up with uh, as much Alaskan companies and lenders as possible. So we worked with uh, uh, Barclay um, and uh, his team out of uh, Anchorage. Yep, absolutely. And they, uh, you know, as always, they uh, stepped right up to the plate and got every got business taken care of. So we've got a question in here from Amanda. Any pet considerations when making the drive move adjusting to a new place? Um, so I would say the biggest one for us, we have Hudson, who is a beaver terrier. He tops out around eight pounds, although he's a little chunky right now. Um, obviously you can have small dogs anywhere. Oh, you're gonna torment him, are you? Yeah. Oh, here's Hudson. Um, he needs a haircut. <laughs> um, that's probably been the biggest adjustment for us so he wears a coyote vest that has spikes and sparkler type things on the back to kind of distract birds from knowing what he is um that's probably been the most stressful for us is just the amount of care to make sure he doesn't get out from a fence situation um, or getting eaten by anything so yeah. have big dogs um, and there's a lot of dogs here that are off leash. Pretty much all of them are always off leash, which is fine most of the time, but you'll have dogs that run up and because he is so small, we're extra conservative with that. So that's been something else we try to be extra mindful of too when we're out hiking and, and stuff is that we can quickly get to him if we need to. Yeah, he's a little chicken nugget. He's eagle bait. So you just have to have a little extra care if you're gonna bring your small dog or cat. Yeah, I mean, definitely those vests that you guys mentioned, that's an absolute must. Um, I'm I'm less worried about other dogs. I'm actually more concerned about bald eagles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're just looking up there, and I mean, yeah, it, it's just a little snack to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great question, Amanda. Yep. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, not really a question, but a nice comment from Greg. The chickens can bring down bears here in the area. So, um, yes, I would have to agree with that. Uh, let's see. Coming in from Isaiah, what did you have to use for documents, et cetera, to prove your residency? We used our um, purchase agreement for our house mm -hmm. since we had um, officially purchased the house. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to get up through Canada. Outstanding. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at a question here from Brandon. What other areas would you recommend other than Palmer after traveling around? Is this specific to buying a house or just like in general? You know, let's let's just say in general, let's say for visiting and then like you're wanting to put roots down in this area as well. Um, so for visiting, um, I'm a huge fan of Homer. I think it's one of my favorite places on earth, if not the favorite. Um, I think it's wonderful. And if it wasn't six hours away from an airport, I would convince us to move there. Um, Cooper's Landing is beautiful. Um, Whittier, we love. Yeah, Kenai. Yeah. I would say we like Girdwood too, but we mm -hmm. can't afford to live there. It's too fancy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Girdwood's like too good for most Alaskans, if I'm being honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not our not our audience. Yeah. I mean that that really is for those of you who aren't aware, it's a, it's the biggest well, I think it's like the only really like skiing resort in Alaska. It's not really my scene, but I think that's really the only one and they can pretty much charge whatever they want and yeah the prices are just home prices there if you can get like a like a thousand square foot lot it's still going to be an arm and a leg so it's it's a pretty competitive little market yeah and then from like honestly i recommend palmer or wasilla area like the matsu valley for buying a home um it's an hour-ish drive to anchorage if you want something down that way but everything you would need and want is here and it's beautiful with the mountains um, if you're willing to put up with wind on occasion uh, but I, this is i don't regret moving to this location at all and there hasn't been a place yet where i'm like well maybe we should have done this instead no this is we really like it here there's homes for sale in the neighborhood contact you in. <laughs> <laughs> solid love it it's true though solid. So we got one coming in from Mr. Benjamin. What's the best adventures you've been on and what are you most looking forward to in the upcoming year? You first. Me? Um, so not everyone gets to see Denali and unfortunately the mm -hmm. road to get out there is still shut down and will be for I think a, at least a couple of years. Um, so you're if you're in a helicopter, you're pretty much going to see it. But if you're on the ground, it's a little bit more difficult, um, more so now than than normal. But our first try at seeing Denali, we got to see it um, from Talkeetna. Um, and I think we did that whole trip in a day. So we left Palmer, drove to Talkeetna, explored the town, um, got some of the famous spinach bread, and we went out to the river and were able to see the actual uh, peak of the mountain. And that was a, a pretty cool uh, adventure and we drove all the way back into Palmer that same day. So like, that's, I think a pretty big deal to do that in a day. What's, uh, what's the spinach bread? I've never heard of that before. Oh, you guys are, you're teaching me something new here. So yeah. What's uh what's the scoop it's on? The, spinach bread? It's the Talkeetna spinach bread. I don't know. They're in like the shiny trailer and, and they, they do this really luxury flatbread that's made with spinach uh, topping and stuff. It's excellent. You can also get it at the state fair. Um, and, but the line is, down the block it's definitely the, the biggest line at the state fair but yeah it's we get to tell keaton for huh i have never heard it okay i'm gonna have to actually really go intentionally go find that out now <laughs> yeah you're yeah. gonna have to uh, huh mm -hmm. interesting okay uh meg do you have anything you want to want to add to that yeah so homer halibut fishing was probably the best adventure um and i know we've talked about that already most looking forward to this year. So we we explored a ton of the South um, last year. So we're heading North this year. We have our first adventure. So we're gonna take the train to Fairbanks in March. You can see the lights up there, kind of explore around Fairbanks, get some, some feel for the Northern landscape and then- Yep, now that there. Santa's done, we can go to the North Pole and see him. <laughs> yeah, I imagine they're, uh, imagine they're pretty busy and booked. 
leading up to December. So I, I bet you guys can still get some photos. So if you're trying to get ahead for like the, the Christmas card for next year, like here's your, your opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben. All right. Coming in from Blessed Thistle Home uh, Farmstead. How's the market now as compared to last year? More homes, land. I see stuff selling quickly now. So, um, so what we're seeing is that actually the market has not gone backwards. And um, I'm just like letting you guys know real quick here. Uh, my battery is starting to run out a little bit. So I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and answer a question real quick as I change out my battery. Is that cool? And then I'll, yeah. I'll get back to this one. Okay. So coming in from Kimber Customs, how is the daylight in the summer? Are blackout shades a must? And uh, I'm going to need you guys to talk on that for at least three minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and go. Okay. go. Right. Okay. Um, so I will say before we moved or once we told people we were coming up here, everyone, everyone's first question is, are you worried about the dark? And my answer was, I'm worried about the sunlight. And that has actually been, I think, the biggest adjustment for us. So working Central Standard Time, we need to be up at four o'clock in the morning to be at work at five. And going to bed at a reasonable time is extraordinarily difficult because it is full daylight up until like 11 o'clock midnight. Um, so yes, blackout shades are a must. It's one of the first things that we purchased here. Um, we went through Blinds Unlimited, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep, Blinds Unlimited. Um, and they hand make everything, which is great. So it's custom to the, you can kind of see one behind Christopher there. Um, super, super awesome, but that took a lot longer than we had originally thought it would. So we went a couple of months and it was extraordinarily difficult. So yes, blackout shades, hundred percent a must first thing you do. Yeah. New construction home. There was nothing on the windows and I wasn't willing to put up anything permanent unless it was what I wanted. Um, so we toughed it out, but we actually have, uh, the blind guy coming back tomorrow um to measure the window in the bathroom so what we noticed was when we keep uh, our bathroom door shut in the summer so there's no air conditioning in in many if not all of the houses uh, up here in alaska so we had some 80 degree days um this uh, past summer which was awesome um but that gets kind of warm in the room so what we want to do is be able to leave our bathroom door open where we have a heat um or not a heat exchanger but uh, an air exchanger that'll turn the air over, uh, make it less stuffy, but we didn't put a, a block out uh, shade on the window in the bathroom. So we're having that done. So now we can uh, <laughs> sleep all the way through uh, in the summer. Yeah, definitely a must. Yeah, that's uh, that's great having that air exchanger. And um, yeah, that's, that's really a big point as well. If you're up here in Alaska in the summertime, there's gonna be a couple days where it gets, gets kind of toasty, which, Oh my word! It was such a such a godsend for a little bit. So this past summer, uh, we forget the first half of that summer was actually really hot and like really bright, and we forget because the second half was like the the wettest summer we've ever had. So it was no just so, much so yeah, just raining nonstop is what it felt like. So it was just glorious for the first half, and then kind of ended on a had a not a great second half. But honestly, it was probably a good thing because. Yeah, we were probably about to go up in flames, so it was probably a good thing we we got that much rain. <laughs> All right, so uh, blessed thistle farmstead. Let me jump back and answer this one now that I've got a fresh battery. So it kind of depends which area that you're looking at. Across the board, we are starting to see that we're seeing a little bit more inventory creep up compared to what we had the year before, um, and that's that's great. You know, if you're looking at buying, um, I wouldn't get too excited, though, just because the past couple of years was like the, the record, like low years ever. So being able to have a little bit more than what we had the year before, um, that's not setting the bar very high. The average sold price is still going up. If you're looking at Anchorage, the average sold price was actually about 6.9% year over year. This year, it's 7.6%. So even though the inventory is going up, and the interest rates are going up, the average sold price is continuing to go up. Um, now in the Matsu Valley, you're starting to see a, a little bit of a pulling back of what the average sold price is 
And by that, I mean just the rate at which it's going up, because before it was going up at nearly 15% year over year. Now, you know, it's only going up by around 9 or 10%. So still, still really solid appreciation, still higher than what you're going to find in Anchorage. That's probably not going to change anytime soon either. But that's, that's kind of what we're seeing for the time being. Um, you know, luckily, you're, it's not the same market that we're in now than what we were a year ago. Because as, um, you know, as uh, Chris and Meg can uh, testify for, it could be pretty competitive when you yeah. found a good house. I mean, you were going to be competing with people. That was just a given. Mm -hmm. but we're in a new construction and most of the homes have gone pretty quickly, at least here from what we can tell. Yeah. And I mean, in years past, like new construction was the thing where, you know, it would sit on the market for about three, four months. And yeah, it, uh, you used to be able to have some time on it, you can kind of mull it over, think it over a little bit. And, uh, that's definitely, definitely, <laughs> uh, wasn't the case. Um, and yeah, so that's that's just part of the part of the deal you make with the devil. All right, let's see here. Let's let's go ahead and answer this one real quick. So coming in from Nigel the Vapid. So sorry if this is this has already been asked, but has the work market been promising, encouraging for both of you in terms of staying? So I don't know if this one's really applicable to you guys and so much of it is just working remote but is there anything you'd like to add to it yeah like we both work remote um in that regard it is sometimes difficult to get people to be willing to buy or buy hire people from alaska to work remotely there that can be difficult so um yeah we, we haven't tried to actually find a job here in alaska yeah i would i would do about anything to stay for the foreseeable future. Outstanding. All right, for those of you in the comments section, um, this is kind of your final call. So if you got some more questions, anything like that, go ahead and get them in here. We're gonna take a couple more and then we're we're gonna let uh, let our guests kind of get on, <laughs> get on with their day here. So let's see, so we've already got that one. Let's see here. I've got just a couple more here. So coming in from Brandon, taking us home here. So after a year, would you choose your decision to move? No. Uh -uh. There nope. we go. <laughs> no period. We, we absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, once you've, yeah, I got to say, guys, it's, um, it's pretty rare to find folks that are able to make that decision to make it happen. And then like they, they kind of like stick with it and it's something that they actually really end up loving and enjoying. So I gotta say hat, hats off to you guys. You guys have uh, definitely got in there and um, you know, made it happen very quickly. So you're kind of just beating the odds everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right couple more things here and then we are going to adjourn so coming in from mr ross bowman i am proud of you chris and megan i miss you both i'm so glad you're having a great time in alaska i love you both i am glad one of us got to move there <laughs> we love you ross you're welcome anytime bring the whole fam mm -hmm. <laughs> outstanding all right, guys. Well, I think that's that's all we have here. So thank you very much for joining us on this live stream. Um, do you have any final thoughts, anything like that you'd like to like to add before we take it home? If you're thinking about it, do it. Um, to Jamin's point, I think you can make anything work if you kind of it's cliche to put your mind to it, but it's it is everything you think it could be and um, I love, yeah, we love it. We're so glad we did it. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't in encourage anyone else that's thinking about it to just take a chance on it. Um, do your planning, do your diligence, um, find the right advocate for you, whoever that it was. For us, it was Jamin. And I don't mean to make it weird by plugging him, but like truly he was our boots on the ground um, to talk to us 
about not just the housing market, but just anything in general about the area. Um, so, you know, find out whoever that person is for you if you need it, um, and then make it happen. Yeah, outstanding. Well, guys, again, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Damon. We'll uh, definitely have to have you guys over next time we do game night as well, because you guys are. I'm not visiting out of state anymore, so we'll uh, definitely have to have you over for that. <laughs> well, that's with a good time because we'll take you up on it. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, for the rest of you, thanks for watching. And we've got another live stream coming up next week, so I'll be looking forward to that. And everybody have a good night. Thank you.